Okay, so some takeaways from uh, session four on data collection tied back quite neatly to some of the, the concerns from session one. Mindful that in any country, PAD involves a very small number of cases, as we heard over and over, and is in no way a fix for problems of aging societies. Here are some of the specific data concerns. Our overarching questions were very ar neatly articulated by Jennifer Gibson. Which data matters and why? Access, quality, equity, and societal impact were all mentioned as important indicators. Whose perspective matters? Uh, the perspectives of the public were repeatedly mentioned as not always well captured by the data that is reported, but nevertheless an important part of the story, as well as the perspectives of patients and of providers. And who has accountability uh, for both the collection of data and the use of data? Government, other regulators such as uh, medical licensing boards, the research community were also mentioned. Uh, there was much discussion about what do we want the government in any country to collect data on, and what should the government stay out of but that we need to understand? Uh, communication about uh, physician aid and dying was mentioned several times as something that would be very hard to collect uh, data on, but yet is fundamental to understanding what is actually going on in, in this practice. Um, also with, uh, mentioned with respect to communication was that uh, uh, trying to fill in gaps in our understanding of how this process works can compete directly with patient and centered goals, which would be seen as central to the process. Examples would be um, trying to get patients' own accounts of their motivation for requesting PAD, or getting in-depth patient and family experiences of PAD. Mostly, we get these via providers' perspectives. That would be, of course, insufficient for, for understanding the patient's own perspective or the family's own perspective. But as uh, was mentioned uh, by a family member, patients and families undergoing a, a, the process of considering PAD or, or completing this process should not not be expected to participate in research. That would be much too heavy a burden at, about concerning what is essentially a very private act. Another uh, data concern that was uh, raised, uh, particularly by Matt Winnia, was how should the medical community reach and adhere to standards on PAD, including uh, with respect to jurisdictions where it is not yet lawful or, or may never be lawful. Um, and how should data collection reflect these standards? Uh, Matt proposed the, the idea of a national registry. Uh, he mentioned the need to study the consequences, which others uh, in other sessions had mentioned, of the uptick in prescriptions for a newer, less expensive drug combination. Again, bringing in the, the potential socioeconomic dimensions of how people make decisions, including differences uh, between drug prices. Um, the responsibility of advocates to support data collection needed to fully understand PAD was also mentioned. And finally, in an interesting echo of session one, I think we saw from our, our chronological setup was that in the Oregon and in the Netherlands, the public has had a full generation of experience with, with physician aid in dying. And this societal experience, which isn't quite the same thing as saying normalization, um, is but getting used to an idea, getting get, making one's own uh, ideas about how it sits in relation to other aspects of the end of life is, I think we've seen over the course of the last two days, different from how providers at, at adjust to PAD legislation and legalization, considering where it sits in relation to their own practice and deciding how they will act. Will they uh, avoid the practice? Will they uh, decide to be a prescriber? Whatever it may be. This societal process, including how publics learn from each other directly, someone in Massachusetts reads about Oregon, or via third sources on the web, for example, websites like uh, Modern Loss, for example, which is uh, about uh, the way we grieve now, is, is one that I, I look at fairly often, um, is not fully reflected in data collection, but is worthy of study and understanding. So this goes back to Tony uh, Bach's points from the first session. Thank you.